Hello folks, and welcome back to Vintage Survival. As we're in February, uh, we've got a busy month ahead of us. We've got fields to do, as well as we've got some contract work. So let's go to our contracts. Nothing else popped up as, as of interest, but we got some contracts. We've got cultivating and two harvesting contracts. They're both sorghum, and it's both going to the sell every container that's 58 and 87 so what I'm going to do first of all is get these workers on the way what's our doing at? we've gone and purchased a bell trader we've gone John Deere because we can use the loader and I just want to have a look about our front loaders and that because yeah, we've got the size fork, but we don't have a bell spike, so let's go and grab that. And yeah, having a little quick look around of what we've got, we do have some buckets that we used to pick up these stones, but actually, we want one of these. Hopefully, they should work for us. Looks fine, so main colour. Let's go with. Oh no. I am not adding colour to that because that is a grand, so. We'll use that. Front loader is over here. But yeah, what we're going to be doing today, we've got 60 grand. And yeah, we need a few things. We need the bailer and that. So. Yeah, I should. Give me a few secs to get this all sorted, and then we'll go from there. So there we go, we've got the bell forks on, and now we'll need a bather, and what I'm going to go with is the Galinger. Bit expensive at 91 grand. Not interested in any of this, so I'm just going to keep it basic because yeah, 39 grand, that is a big chunk of change, that is. Yeah, that is rather huge, but we'll need it because we've got straw in that, and we've got oats to harvest in this episode as well, so... Yeah, we've got 51, 52, and 47. And everything is around its peak price, around January actually it peaked, so... We're now in the down spiral, so... But yeah, we won't sell at Erdingret. And then later on this evening, what we need to do is sell the silage. That is at its peak at 3.56. And the best place at the moment is the forage dealer, so... Good and good. Ah, uh, interest. What is Sorghum going for at the moment? Again. Around its peak price, if we get a significant amount left over, what we could do potentially is set it on the tray along with our oats. But yeah, we've got a lot of straw to do. 59% completed on field 30. That is the cultivate contract, so it shouldn't take us too long to do. And yeah. Last episode, we got a worker to win the road wall this. Actually, what I'm going to do is... That is almost full. Just keep that going. I'm just going to empty this into our trailer that we bought in last episode, along with our lorry. And that's the thing now, we're hitting our strides. We've done a lot of work now, like, first of all, we're able to afford all this new stuff. It is mainly from all that slide work we did with the maze slidage, but yeah, as I said before, after we did it, I'm going to be doing that too much. Because, yes, we got 21 grand. I thought for, was it, 54? What we can do is invest in potato technology, because I mentioned about doing root crops for ages, so why not invest in it? So. We can do sugar beet. Sugar beet 
ain't gonna do corn because there's no way we can harvest it. Yeah, obviously soybeans, not really interested. Corn sunflower, we'll need a corn header in that, so... Yeah, we can do sugar beet. In fairness, I will go with this one. It's a bit more expensive, but at 8 grand, 5.6 meters. Has got a bit of a bigger capacity. So, yes, yeah, so we go to. Yeah, if we do sugar beet, we've got his mini harvester. I think that's what like a one meter working with. I'm trying to think what else. That only does potatoes and that, so. Well, that. Yeah, actually, if we harvest the potatoes, we can buy this, scoop it all up, and put it into a trailer, because. Yeah, it comes with a hitch option. And if we can get, like, a dolly, in theory, we can get this trailer hooked up onto a tractor. Even though I don't think we're going to have. Um, Powerful enough tractor to be able to do that, but even more small ones if it requires multiple trips. So be it. And also, again, down the road, one thing we can look at doing is invest in a slightly bigger forge wagon. Could do, and actually. Hopefully, yeah, I'll do, I'll do the big bells and that, 150 centimeters. There we go. And this should fill up rather quickly. So we can get the full. Okay, we do need to stop that, so we'll get that unloaded. That's what, yeah, I wish we had a square baiter in that. Then we could just keep on going along as we do, but unfortunately we're not that lucky with that. We don't have the technology available. Yeah, we could have done with the small baiters, but then again as well, it's loads of them. So yeah, fortunately we're gonna stop with this, but okay, that was a small bell. This is gonna be bigger one, so we'll show you yeah, it's about seven and a half thousand years or something like that. Yep, looks like it. There we go. So yeah, we'll get these bells done, and then we'll get them going onto the trail, which should be a whole heap of fun. So yeah, let's get the rest of this done. And I'll see you folks afterwards once we're done here. still got the oats to do, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bells, so I'll say that was a decent hole, so let's go and have a look, uh, so we'll make sure, yeah, 320 kilograms, so hopefully we should be able to lift these without the need for like a weight or anything. And that's how this tractor is, if I let go of the L1 button. 
the hydraulics sort of sort yeah, you see it sort of starts to tilt. And that is not because of the forks or anything, that is because of the actual loader itself, so there we go. can do is do something with Actually what I've got a better idea is let's, let's see if we can stack these. There we go. Yeah I think that would perhaps be a better option for me rather than messing around getting them all aligned up side by side. There we go. Now, we, both sides, should be able to just go forward. There we go. And we've got two bells, so... I've got to remember, I've still got to keep hold of these. Worker G is done, so... I guess that would be the cultivating contract. So yeah, we get another room for a few more bells, so yeah. Let's go and have a look here. Cultivation is done. Combine is full once more. Yeah, as I say, about another two trips or so. So yeah, we'll get as much from both fields in one. So then what we can do is set it all at once. And yeah, if it's, as I said before, if it's a significant amount, I'll set it on the train and get an extra 500 quid, but I'm not holding my breath on that. But anyway, so let's get the rest of this bell loaded and done. And where are we taking these bells? Animal dealer, farmer's market, forage dealer, so yeah. And that is apparent peak price still now of £86 per thousand lire, so yeah. Let's get the rest of this done, and I'll see you folks afterwards once we're done here. load up so let's go and see how much we've got I think it was over 57,000 a year or so yeah 57,500 years and yeah we're gonna take the pick up with this because I don't fancy taking all this with us and there we go we've got a worker they're going to cultivate that field prepping for when we start planting I think, to be honest, I'm tempted to go with sugar beans. And if we can figure out a way to cut said sugar beet, then... Yeah, we can make sugar beet cut, and that does have a bit more of a premium price to it, but... Yeah, also, maybe with the money we'd be getting for all the silage and that later on, and for the oats. So I think, yeah, once we've done 58... Do 57. No, sorry, 87. And then, yeah, in the afternoon, I think we'll start doing our, our own fields actually. Actually, farming our own land. Who will have thought? And then from there, once again, what we do is go and bell all this. I should have a lot more bells, and I will work on my stack in a bit. Because, yeah, he's left me a bit desired, but anyway, let's go sell the stroll. How much did we get? A couple of grand. I know it ain't going to be too much. 
still five grand for that. I'm saying that it is ISP price, so that does make sense. So yeah, let's go back to the farm, rest up a little bit, get the rest of the contracts done, and then I think I'll see you folks later on in the afternoon once we've all these contracts sorted. So, right, we are done, had a little bit of an early lunch, because we've got a lot of harvesting to do, so... Can't get those contracts completed, we did have some leftover sorghum. So, currently they're in the railway silo all the way over there. Got about 4,700 euros, I think. So, yeah, not too bad of a haul. But now... We've got the task of harvesting our free field, so just to recap, we've got 52 here, 51, and 47 is it? Yeah, 47, 51, and 52. So these are decent sized fields. Ignore that strip over there, I'm guessing that was Kurt, by the worker was cultivating the field, so yeah, lovely. Yeah, so in theory, make sure we actually get a swaps off. There we go, because we want that pliable shovel. And yeah, I think what we'll do in the next episode is go and collect all these bells and sell it. Yeah, not too fast on the price. It's going to go down a little bit next month, but overall, yeah, in reality, it ain't going to be that big of a deal. Us. Also later on, what we want to do is clear up that bunker silo. That we will be sent today, so that is 107,000 years I think. As I'm recording this episode immediately after recording the last episode, so yeah, I just want to get a couple of videos done, a couple of videos recorded. And then what I'll do is, once I've done this, I'll edit both of these videos. Um, uploaded and rendered ready to be published. And whilst that's going on, whilst it's all rendering that on the PC, I'll start doing survival challenge because I've got a lot more to do on there, like finishing off the grape harvest. Uh, yeah, in that episode we done, what was it about half the field in that? But that to do, for a of grass, and actually someone did ask me a question recently on like, how do I like manage like, some of these fields and I like, for example, with us using this size combine with all the fields we're doing, it's like using a one of the bigger combines like the K-9250 or something on the American map or something. Fine enough, what we're using on No Man's Land at the moment, and simple. The simple way is, depends on the series I'm doing, like, this series we will be using unrealistic equipment, we will be using productions, but yeah, we'll be using, you know, 80 meter headers and that, or equipment that can go, shoot, it's be like, you know, like with headers with these, we can get the two point control mods, use that, but... Yeah, that's all I'm going to do with this series. This series is using reasonable equipment. And that means like when we're doing contracts on other fields, we can't use this this force pickup. One reason it's a bit too modern for the scene at that moment, we're in 1988. As we progress over time, get to the 90s, because yeah, how many series going to be is sorry in the 80s. Going to the years 2000s, and yeah, how do you from that? Is I've got a couple of ideas, but for one, it's going to be a long way down the road. And I mean, a long way down the road, like this series, how long is it going to go on for? I don't know. Like, I'm simply enjoying, like, even like when I'm not doing something, I'm not recording, I'm in cab and that. That's what we want to do a bit more is use the sort of realistic options like realistic farming techniques, such as as we're doing at the moment is you do the headland, 
typically what you'll see is farmers doing depends on the size of the field and size of the headers are using. Typically you'll see about a two to three heads in that. Like two to three rows of head and done. I think typically it's two depends again. Depends on the size of the combine and the headers itself and other factors like access to the land and that, the terrain and that, and all other stuff, but... Yeah, this series is going to be simple, nothing to bash bash in your face, face and that. With court form, yeah, I'll admit, with things like, just fine enough, just rule from other contracts, we are using the bigger capacity traders when we recently done the... Uh, what's it, the uh, root crop stuff? We use big capacities now just because it's so bulky and now, like, I think, like, the leftover crops alone, we've got like 1.2 million liters. Yeah, they were from big enough fields, I'll admit. But still. And uh, with what I'm going to be doing with replacing Survival Challenge. Is, yeah, it will be on the American map. I think I've got it down to a couple of maps of Iowa Plain Views by Salabuki. St not not Stink Valley, uh, what else was it? Bloomfield, Canada. I can't remember who's that by. Edge War Saskatchewan. Uh, that is by LBC Bureau and so South. I uh, can't remember the name of the yet. Yeah, a couple of maps in mind. Ah, what else was it? Oh yeah, Spruce Mountain Farm. Not Spruce Mountain Ranch, because that is quite more of a forestry map. Yeah, it's like, initially it also looks like Mason County, but... For what I want to do is use the big American equipment you'll see. Not with unreal capacities or anything, just with high level detailing and that. Stuff by like serious modding, custom modding, and that. Just yeah, have a bit of a. Again, it's gonna be a bit of a fun series to do. But also, I'm thinking of or that series should be a realistic series or the one after that would may replace Court Farm. Yeah, I don't know. I think currently what I've got planned. Is what we'll do is use the next series or as a bit of a marker in that, like of how to judge everything. There we go. Get that all grown. But yeah, I am tempted to go with more of the route of realistic, a uh, realistic farming series, like uh, plan techniques, like. Don't go round the circles of a plow because you end up ripping it. As well as like the fill prep, like roll before you seed it that, not not just after seeding. And we do have a great demand at Erdingrat. And um, what's that for? I guarantee it's a crop that we do not have. Or not even planning on doing. Flower. Huh, actually, that, that reminds me. I may not be producing flour in this episode, but... Going to our productions tab, because I think I've got some productions as options. Like, I know we can purchase some of these stuff, which I may do. Things like the spinnery down the road. Get some sheep in and that. But yeah, I think about like the open air garden stuff, some more greenhouses. But yeah, this is one I'm looking for, like, the windmill production. That is 20 grand. And I think for that, what we have to do is dedicate a chunk of land, like, even, I'm thinking, like, this section over here. Ideally, be a good on like, piece of land over here and that. But yeah, it's all, again, it's all about the access, the right of access and that. That's something that sort of fits in, because I just don't want to, you know, whack it here in between the fields. 
but maybe it's going to be on the edge of the field. And I don't want to do it next to the farmyard because it just makes it look like we're super lazy. Like, maybe even something like that. Yes, it'll cut a track off. But then what we can do is carve a part of the field away. And for the price, like 20 grand, all that gives us... Ooh, actually we could do corn flour. Because yes, we eat barley, oats and sorghum. Also corn flour. Yes, we get pig food as a byproduct. And yeah, I'm guessing the tr it spawns out over here. Maybe not have it like... Potentially, I think what I'll do is take a chunk of the field off and just re reserve that for... Yeah, think about... Yeah, just reserve that for... Uh, what's the word for? For the production itself and access to that. But yeah, 20 grand. We can actually do that now, pretty much. Maybe we do that instead in the next episode. If we get it done early enough, get the beam done, sell the bells now. And then what we can do in the next episode is get the flower production on the way. Yes, I know it's not the best time, like flower. Yeah, it's going to be on the downhill spiral. Miss a little bit there. But yeah, if we get flower doing, doing and going. Get some done by April, so a bunch in April. And again, as well, it depends on how much we produce that, because we will need to think about capacity in terms of where we're going to store and stuff. And I think just with that on its own, that brings us to a bit of a revelation of what we do with the oats. Do we sell it? Or do we make flour? Yes, at its peak price, flour is more worth it, hopefully. Because how much are we getting for the oats? Bearing in mind, we're at peak price. Yeah, almost two grand. And as I say, we sell half of this, and the other half is used for flour production. Because the oats can't use that for chicken feed, that's only for horses and oats. And if you are going to get animals in the future, which I do want to do, like, a bit like small scale now, you know, say 50 sheep, 25 cows or something. Chickens, yeah, that's a different story, they wouldn't take up much space at all. And again, that leads us to having the land to actually you have to keep up with feeding that because yeah keeping up with all the feeding that ain't gonna be easy though but uh, anyways it's I'll to think about it whilst we're getting this all done but yeah this is just one field to have got three fields to do so no point yabbing on let's get this all done and I'll see you folks later on this afternoon, once we are done here.
done with the horsing, we have done the bathing, and now it is just time to stack these up. I've done the first trader, and I completely forgot our other trace that we've been using for uh, like the grain and the silage and all that in the past. They can all be configured into bell traders basically, so we didn't have to spend what? Another two, three grand, whatever it was. Also, both got down a little bit just because I had to reconfigure a couple of these traders to support a attacher on the back so we can do a train attachment. Technically, we had to do it for one, but then got everything hooked up, pulled off, and I realised, ooh, one of the traders is missing. And because these are swivel axles, I did not want to deal with that, so I was like, nope. We're just going to just reconfigure the one we had. And yeah, just got everything all hooked up eventually. Long story short, but... There we go. So yeah, we've got the first trailer on. That is 12 bales. I think I'll about these trailers. It all supports each other like that, and... If you know what mod it is, um, so we've got our traders. Actually, it's technically it's all different packs, so... Just to double check. The Bell Trader we purchased last episode. And... This one here, that could be used for... I think that's one with the higher capacity, but... Anyway, it's that is the Lizard P935 pack. And there's another one, 2PS6A mod. So if we have a look here, go to my mod, so... Ah, oh, where is it? To Lizard. So yeah, the Lizard P95 pack, you get all of these triggers. That's what I love about these kind of packs, it is so helpful. Ooh, we can have something for a balloon straw in that, so... I think that would be like a forge wagon or something. Great traders, timber traders, and that. Universal boxes. I haven't seen that one before. Ooh, that, that is something different. But yeah, you get the Orgo wagons. Size traders. Uh, yeah, you just get a whole bunch of everything. Um, the other one, the P, whatever it is. And I mean, no. Where's that one too? Ah, it's this one here on the top, the 2PS pack. See, so yeah, that's one got a 19,000 year capacity, the other one, yeah. That's what I just love about these traders it is cheap, it's versatile. That's, what, that's why I tend to use them on some of my Let's Play series, like use them temporarily on court farm. When we had horses and struggling with the horses' feet situation. And just, yeah, that's what makes some of these mods so helpful. And yeah, I think that just on its own is what makes Farm Sim what it is today, what it holds, what it represents, the reach in the community, and that. It's yeah, mods has definitely helped, because it's pretty much recreating the game. It's making the game either easier or harder. Gives the player base, as in me, and everyone else, just a whole... Yeah, just makes... gives the game more of a lifespan as well. So rather than just have to be rushing or get a farming game out year after year after year, like you'll see with a lot of games nowadays. I know personally things like racing games, that, especially F1, Formula 1. Obviously, there's a difference now, I'll admit, but you can tell over the years. Oh, nope. Screw it. But yeah, you can just tell over the years because the games have to come out year after year after year, back to back. It's ruined the games, like F1, I purchased F1 23, I bought the Championship Edition, and that was expensive, that is, 90 quid, that was, and 
Yep, wish you now I had the night quits because that can be used for so many things, but at the moment. Just yeah, I thought, yeah, I'm playing F123 now, get back into the racing. Completely missed the sign ups for the current season and past seasons before, so. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's always it's one thing if it's not something else. In, But yeah, long story short, is I've only put what? 50, maybe 100 hours in the game? If that's even. And for me personally, with F1 games, only doing what, 50 hours or so, is for me unheard of. Like, with previous F1 games, I've can easily do over a thousand hours in the game, and 95% of that is from league racing. Obviously, you've got your league racing groups like Apex Online Racing, AOR, Next Gen Racing, PSGL, and obviously, yeah, if you know your sim racing stuff, or know the sim racing community, you'll recognise most, if not all, of those communities. Uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. And yep, I only want to screw it. I was thinking, I saw like Dagwin doing this, like put bells side to side. I think it's because maybe the forks are too wide, like the spikes, I don't know. You know what? I'm just going to stack these, like so. Gently take it over, and yeah. So yeah, I'm not going to do time maps for this because it's my horrendous bell sacking skills, so I'm going to get this done. I know there's a bit of green there we forgot, but you know what? Screw it. And then yeah, we'll run off the episodes with getting the size salt and yeah, dealing with all the green because I think we had, what, 40,000 years? Yeah, just shy of 40,000 a year, so... And yeah, I'm uh, still debating on where I'm not sure set it. But, yeah. Give me a few minutes to think about that. And I'll see you folks in a few seconds. Once we get the bell stacking done. And there we go. We are done. And yeah, just one bell to go. And in here, it is time to sell all these bells, so... As you can see, this is why I didn't redo a time-lapse, because... Well, so I can eat my forte. This trailer doesn't have no tension strap, so these bells are just hanging about, so... That should be a ball of fun. But yeah, i got one bell to go. Just don't really have to reach, like... No point trying to do it in cab, but just squeeze it on top. And quick get that strap on before just everything goes to bits. So that's that. That's all strapped. That's all strapped. So we've got two hundred and thirty two and a half thousand years. Plus another 7, 15, 21, 22 and a half thousand a year, so 733, 735 thousand liters of straw. So, and the best place to sell them is at the Forge dealership. So, let's head over there and get these sold. And here we are at the Forge dealer. So, now. Let's do the process of selling everything. So it was on 32,700. Where are we at now? Let's get all these spells sold. Hopefully, don't need to move anything. There we go. And that's Bell. So for all these bells from all those fields, that is 21 grand. And now we need to call on the train to get the soul because, yep, I have decided and we're going to be selling our grain because I've got a plan. So, let me get a train here, but then I'll explain my plan. 
So here comes the train. And yeah, the plan is invest in something else. Invest in root crops. Obviously we're gonna be planting potatoes. But I'm also thinking about the well, I just hopped over there and train stops here, so we hop into the train. And yeah, not just potatoes, but purchasing Field 88, the big field next to ours. So I think we can get a buck loose stuff in there, so... But before doing that, we need to get everything in. So we've got the oats going in. And I think we've got a bit of sorghum as well. There we go, that's full. Lose you. Ash no. Lose you. All for just a little bit. And uh, we want sorghum, so. No, where's that two? Yeah. 4,000 litres, so. Overall, should get around about 75 grand for this. Because, yeah, the new land itself, that's going to cost us how much? 61 grand. Plus the equipment for planters, harvesters, and that, and the pickups, and that. Just everything we're going to need is going to be an additional 20 grand or so. And yeah, we need that buffer again because we're going to be having some gaps between harvest, harvest seasons. Well, in between harvesting itself, yes, we've got the wheat and that, but like with the barley, no, yeah, like with the barley and that we did in the last episode, I just want to preserve as much of our grain we can for the time being, so we can figure out basically how much we need for the f animals. Actually, no, we've got more than that, 85 grand. Screw the old 90 or 75 grand. We've now got 139 grand again, so... Yeah, if I have a look here, so... Here's the thing. I won't do potatoes, I won't do sugar beet and that, so... To plant the potatoes, we need something like this. One of these... Could be about a grand itself, not too bad. To pick up all the crops and that. Potatoes, sugar beet and that. Including the root crops, that is six grand. It's going to be another six grand for the harvester for the potatoes and the new vegetable crops. For the sugar beet, we're looking at eight grand for the mini beet harvester. Obviously, it's going to be worth it in the end, it's just timing. That's me, it's time, not money. A lot of things is all is all time and money this, time and money that, BS. But as you know, for us it ain't. It's literally just time. Money wise, we're fine. And in terms of contracting, we accepted three contracts. That is for the next episode because we can do a more in this month. So yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it today. Be a very good day. Got a new harvester, got a new harvester, new baiters and that. Got sold a bunch of bells, sold more crops. And yeah, we are looking good. Looking forward to where this is going. So yeah, that is where I'm going to leave it today. And as always, hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, smash that button, click the down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not the subscriber, then please consider not where you to do. If you're gonna stay for now, it's from Evo Extreme, and I'll see you all very soon.